it's time for the MCTS Experience mini episode. Welcome, everybody. We're very, very excited to share this uh, mini episode of the MCTS Experience with you. Um, we have a special guest from Princeton Plasma Physics Lab. Uh, please welcome Shannon Swilly Greco. Hi, Shannon. Hi. How are you today? Very good. How are you? Super fantastic. Thanks for asking. Producer Nick, of course, is here with us and the legendary Dave Nash. Good howdy, afternoon. howdy, everyone. Uh, very excited to be here on site yeah. at PPPL, which it's known in the in the county and in the area. PPPL. Well, I mean, too many P's. It is. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it is. But you know what? When you grow up in Mercer County or, you, you know, Princeton, West Windsor, you know, you know about this place and it's it's a legacy and it's a legend. So we're super excited to unpack this for our listeners. Yes. Nash and I are by far the dumbest people in the building right now. I can tell you that. <laughs> That's not true. We'll put both me and Mick together, and hopefully we'll get... We, we equal one one of the other brains. In this, in this place. Love it. I love it. So, so with, Well, oh, yes. Yeah. So so we're excited because we began a relationship with you guys last spring, um, and we'll, we'll talk more about that, about the apprenticeship program. But right now, we have four of our students, right? Two from the adult school, uh, from the adult evening school, and two of our share time kids that just graduated. Correct. Um, will, you, will you talk about those kids first, just so they can get their names on the air? Sure. Uh, oh, yeah. We're so happy to have them here. They went through our pre-apprenticeship program, and now they have been selected as the four new apprentices in this four-year program. So we've got Sheehan Toomey, we've got Aaron Floyd, we've got Kevin Purdy Jr., and we've got um, Bobby Bongiovanni. I'll try to yes, say that Robert correctly. Bon Giovanni. <laughs> and that sounds like a Partridge family member. Bobby Bongiovanni. <laughs> Robbie bon Giovanni. Excuse me. Robbie, Robbie. <laughs> Uh, Robert was in the criminalistics program, and she and Toomey in our building maintenance trades program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so yeah, we know we know those kids very mm -hmm. very well. Dynamic, great kids for real, honestly. Shannon came to our school. She went to Cypec uh, one afternoon and and Assam Pink another afternoon, mm -hmm. and it was like watching. It was like a, a grown up mad science show. You know that <laughs> mad science where the guy comes in a lab coat and does mm -hmm. these tricks. So so. That presentation, Shannon, is something you do all over the place? All the time. I could do it with my eyes closed. <laughs> if anybody wants a school visit, I'm happy to do it. Um, so for yeah. real, if, if, yeah. if you're listening and you want to come to your middle school, your high school, mm -hmm. you can come in yeah. anywhere locally. Yeah. Um, I don't like going more than 45 minutes away. Okay. Um, but yeah, we'll pack up all our demos. We have lots of great demos that really illustrate the concepts that are at play in our machines here, which is you know all about plasma research and fusion energy research. Um, we've got, uh -huh. yeah, electricity and magnetism, light spectra. It connects to all the school standards, the next-gen science standards. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And so by you coming in, and I remember it was after Memorial Day, which is usually in all, in, in all education world, secondary education, high school education, coming in after Memorial Day, it's like, yeah, I don't know about this. And I remember connecting with you. I'm like, look, you got to keep them tight. And yeah. boy, you did a phenomenal job. Anybody listening, please have Shannon come to your school or talk to your BTA. A room full of kids who know they're going to graduate. And most of them already have some <laughs> sort of a game plan. And it's a beautiful day outside. Yeah, it was great. It was great, though. <laughs> but the, the understanding of what PPPL is, I think that really grabbed people because people don't know the history. So w what was it as you rolled this out to these four individuals that did come to pre-apprenticeship? And we're going to unpack that. What are you guys doing here? I mean, to, to somebody's like, I don't even know what this place is, and it's around here. Well, so many people don't know what it is. They drive past the sign on Route 1, and they, you know, it may kind of register in their subconscious, mm -hmm. but they don't really know what we do. So what we do is uh, we study plasmas for the purposes of nuclear fusion, primarily. Um, we are a Department of Energy national lab. Um, mm -hmm. There are, what, 17 across the country? Um, and you know, some of them are maybe more famous in bigger labs like uh, Los Alamos and oh, Oak Ridge National okay. Lab, all okay. of those things. Um, we're one of the smaller labs, and, but we are managed by Princeton University. So we are part of the university community. We're all Princeton University employees, and now our apprentices are too. Wow. They get all the benefits of being a Princeton University oh, employee, which goodness. are fantastic, but that's for another conversation. Yep, yep, yep. Um, but we, we're offsite. We are um, across Route 1 from the university. And we are on the original site where Lyman Spitzer first conceived of stellarators um, and the, the, the idea for controlling plasmas for fusion. Wow. 
Einstein was in these four walls of this facility? I don't know if Einstein was. Yeah, he was okay. hanging around in that area. He was at the Institute for Advanced Studies. Uh, okay, mm-hmm. uh, IAS. Okay. He called over on his iPhone and said, right. I, I am just down the street. <laughs> well, no, he wrote the letter to FDR. I mean, yeah, yeah. He, he, mm-hmm. he sparked. For the yes, creation of, course, of the whole of Department of Energy, in fact, yes. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. How, what, so what legacy, which rich history and b- between Institute of Advanced Studies and you guys, I'm mm-hmm. sure you collaborate, you work together. Yeah. And it's all this massive ability to unlock uh, f- fusion mm-hmm. information and mm-hmm. how it can be an energy source. Which yeah. Is really yeah. So neat. our primary mission is nuclear fusion. Um, there's a lot of spin off projects in studying plasmas. You find lots of other uses for it, like plasma thrusters for space propulsion. Uh, we actually have uh, a spin off technology came uh, to pasteurize eggs without cooking them. Uh, yeah, weird things. There's a uh, Colgate is studying using plasmas for teeth whitening or something. Really? I'm not actually sure what they're doing here. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but there's, is, is there a of, space shuttle engine on site? No. Because no. okay. those are combustion engines, and that's what we're trying to replace, actually, with the plasma thrusters. It's, Look at that. It actually reduces um, the amount of payload you need to contribute. Uh, you need to dedicate to fossil fuels and burning up fuels. You know, you see the rocket go up yes. and it dumps the, the giant. Jettison, the jettison, right. the tanks. It jumps, it, jump, it dumps the big tanks, and you don't need that once you get up there. Like, once you get up there, you're in orbit, and you don't have a whole lot of control over mm-hmm. your direction. But with our plasma thrusters that we're working on, um, you do. And they're actually in use now. Um, so we work with Princeton Satellite Systems. Um, they have hull thrusters. They're called um, plasma thrusters to, um, to change the direction and propel uh, satellites. Uh, so is I, I'm sorry I'm sorry no, is there a flux capacitor on stuff? Oh Do you stop! Have one of those? Well, my my dad has a DeLorean actually. Oh, no, he doesn't. Yeah, he does he not. Does. He's had yes. it since I was uh, was three years old. He bought an eighty one, and actually he still has it. And like just this weekend, I was in Houston, and we took pictures of my two year old in it. Oh, that's it's, adorable. Yeah, and, we, and he adorable. drove it here, and we actually took a picture of it in front of the lab, and we put a little Brita filter on the back, <laughs> and and put a little label on it that said Mister Fusion. So we have a photo of my dad's DeLorean oh, that is at, so at the Princeton Plasma Physics. Oh, that is awesome. Doc Brown. Yeah. Doc Brown. yeah. Mm-hmm. So literally within, a, I don't know, a five minute conversation, we can talk about nuclear fusion, <laughs> different offshoot products. And these are all things. And this is happening just from all the data that's generated when you guys, quote unquote, fire off mm-hmm. and, and tell our audience what you guys primarily, how do you create a plasma? I mean, plasma is mm-hmm. the fourth matter. The fourth state of matter. Uh-huh. Um, so, pl- yeah, a lot of people think plasma, the stuff in your blood, it's the origin of the word. Uh, there's mm-hmm. a connection there, but other than that, it's totally not that kind of plasma. Okay. Um, you see plasmas every day, I promise you. Um, it's the fourth state of matter. The other states are solid, liquid, and gas. Mm-hmm. And you go from one to the other by heating it. So you melt a solid to form a liquid. You you know, heat up and evaporate the liquid to turn into the a vapor. gas. Mm-hmm. And then you heat it up even more, and it turns into a plasma, and it does crazy things. So, uh, <laughs> the like fire, fire is a plasma. Fire is a plasma. The sun and all the stars are plasma. Ninety nine percent of the visible universe is plasma. Like almost everything that you see when you look up. So, into the light night from sky. a star that we see is plasma. It's well, the light is what's given off by the plasma in the stars. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very interesting. That's yeah. fantastic. So, yeah. lightning. Light- lightning is a plasma. Um, the plasma TVs they have uh, little tiny bits of plasma that, that you know are. The, create the pixels mm-hmm, in mm-hmm. your image, um, and is that from heat as well? Yeah. So, but it's uh, well, it's more of a, a voltage actually. So, okay. you, um, the, uh, fluorescent light bulbs uh, yes. are also plasma. So, that's actually a really good example of a plasma that you can see how the the relationship is between uh, density, distance between your electrodes, yes. and um, and the voltage. So, all pl- uh, fluorescent light bulbs are at a you know they're at a standard distance. And so they are calibrated with the exact amount of mercury gas usually um, mm-hmm. in those to uh, maximize the energy from the voltage that's being put in these light bulbs. And so that's the the most efficient um, amount of gas that you can well, – For, so for you, light creation. To create – so when mm-hmm. you turn a gas into a plasma, it starts giving off light. That's one of the cool things that it does. The other thing it does is it um, it actually conducts electricity. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. It, you're moving these atoms so fast that – so you imagine an atom – it's got in the center of it. It's got a nucleus, which is made of nucle- um, neutrons and protons, mm-hmm. and on the outside you've got these electrons. Yes, you, um, that's true of all the other states of matter. But when you get it going in the plasma state, it actually starts ripping those electrons off. And when those electrons can move freely, that's when you got electricity. They move up and down in energy levels. When they move down, they release light. But then they're also ca- charged particles, so you can move them with magnets. 
Nick, I want you to edit this out if this is a really stupid question. There's um, no such thing. <laughs> but uh, is, so is that how it's, uh, it's an energy source? So the plasma itself is not the energy source. No, no, but that, but that motion that you talked about afterwards? Mm, no. no. Okay, you have to, uh, you have to add a lot of energy. To, <laughs> no, it's not. No, but it, it gives me an opportunity to explain. So I love those mm-hmm, questions. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you add energy to create the plasma, now it is an energetic particle. So it's moving around. Where you, where you get the actual energy is when you've got those particles going so fast that they start smashing into each other and fusing and actually creating new elements. So in our uh, plasma, we use hydrogen, which is the smallest element. Mm-hmm. On the, if you, you imagine your periodic <coughs> table, the one yes. with the, um, the atomic number of one is yes. hydrogen. Yes. So it's the easiest to move around this fast. And so we get it going super fast. Um, and it's in the, and because it's super fast, that means it's in the plasma state. So all the difference between all the states of matter is just really how fast your so particles the mole- are moving. The speed of the molecules right. on a molecular structure. Right. So understand. solids are moving very so slowly slow. and just kind of vibrating. Liquids are flowing, you know, a little bit more. They've, they're moving faster in a gas and they're moving even faster in a plasma and they're starting to get pulled apart. So when those hydrogen atoms are going super fast, you know, if it wasn't a plasma, they would get close to each other. And, um, and if it wasn't even a hot plasma, it would get close to each other and they would kind of move towards each other, but then their st- electrostatic charge would repel them, you know, okay. yeah. like, uh, like repels, they would have the same charge. So they would repel and mm-hmm. opposites attract, mm-hmm. um, they would push each other apart once they got close. But okay. if you go, get them going so fast that they don't have so a So there's chance, a you speed can, threshold, which you right. exceed and go to this next level. Yeah. Understood. And so once they're going that fast, they're more likely to overcome that repulsion and stick. And then they turn into helium. So oh, wow. that's one of the cool things about fusion energy actually is the byproduct is helium. So like, you know, with nuclear fission, uh, you know, what you normally think of with nuclear power plants, you have all this radioactive waste and you have, you know, um, sure. depleted uranium with our byproduct and actually with car- carbon and fossil fuels, your byproduct is carbon dioxide and water. And so then you have climate change resulting. The big byproduct of ours is helium and you have a balloon party. Yeah. <laughs> like, big deal. <laughs> so you're the smartest person I've ever talked to. Now, I have to bring, it, it. I have to bring it back for a second sure. now to talk about, because the stuff you just said, my head is spinning. <laughs> so I picture what everybody thinks of as a tech school kid mm. coming to work at a place like this, right? Yeah. How is this possible? Let's get back to talking mm-hmm. about the Oh, sure, sure. The no, but the neat part is, is that's what's going on. And your machines that are present here, and what's, what's the name of the one machine, the the National Spherical Torus Experiment. Right? Um, upgrade. National yeah. Spherical Torus Experiment. So we are the U.S. Fusion Program. Uh, that is the national, our national machine, right? We've got a big American flag sticking out the top of the machine. It's awesome. It's awesome. Uh, and it's, uh, it's what's called a tokamak. It's a kind of fusion reactor. But that machine is what our apprentices are working on. So actually, Sheehan, was, you know, we were talking to Sheehan the other day, and he can explain to you all about how we can find the plasma with the magnets that he's working on. Uh, oh, that's yeah. fantastic. And and he graduated from Mercer County Technical School last June. Yes. Yeah. So it's not, the, hey, I had to go through this massive, intense training program, and we're not doing it. Sheehan's working here yep. every he's day, as well right as Kevin now. is. This is yes. the massive, intense and training right. program. Yeah. <laughs> he's here now doing it. And in addition to the training, right, yes. they are getting paid. Yes, they are getting benefits and every mm-hmm. other every mm-hmm. other thing that comes with being an employee of Princeton University. Yep. And they're going to be getting the whole enchilada at the end yes. of all this. Yeah. Right? At the end of four years, they will have completed 8,000 hours um, of on-the-job training, um, all technical training with our, um, with our technicians and engineers um, getting mentored by them. And then they're also getting 576 hours of coursework at Y'all school, um, Mm -hmm. Mercer County Technical School. And it's all what's considered related technical instruction according to the federal and state apprenticeship programs. Okay. So they're getting on-the-job training and they're getting uh, the in-class training. And that is all covered by a grant from uh, the state. Unbelievable. In in much the same way like an electrical apprentice or a carpenter's apprentice or something like that Mm -hmm. would would go out and get their training, but they're making money while they're doing it. Yes. And there's a nice big brass ring at the end of it. Yes. And they will be completely qualified to work here full time for as long as they want. We and our technicians don't leave. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, when on the first day that they were here, um, we introduced them to a bunch of technicians that they would be working with, and we go around the room to introduce, and everyone says their name, what department they work on, and what machines they work on, and how long they've been here. And everyone's like, 37 years, 38 years, 39 years. Oh, my gosh. 
it's it's such a good place to work and so many people here really believe in the mission of achieving this alternative energy source of fusion it's it's a lofty goal you're working to save the world and you're getting good benefits and good pay and you're you're really learning an amazing skill that skill that honestly all these skills are transferable you could take these and be, go become an electrician or whatever mm-hmm. sure, sure. But, mm-hmm. but we think they'll stay <laughs> yeah I, apparently they will yeah. let's all right so let me t- go down the rabbit hole the sure. the this isn't for and done this is just the initial start yeah of this and you guys don't foresee an end of this right now i mean of course it'll be an end at some time but mm-hmm. right now you're like hey dave we're going to be looking for people yeah. that and again they're qualified candidates there's an a, a application process mm-hmm. you guys have an internal way of seeing seeing if it's a a proper key and a lock fit mm-hmm. meaning the right individual needs to be here with the right skill set and you guys have a way of synthesizing mm-hmm. that so let's pretend somebody gets working here and they're 25 30 years old and they said hey you know what i think i want to go back and maybe go obtain a two-year degree a four-year degree a master's I'm sure that's happened in the history oh, yeah. of PPPL. Mm-hmm. Is that a, a feasible option for somebody? Absolutely. In fact, Princeton University, one of the benefits is that they provide 85% of your tuition reimbursement uh, if you're working towards wow. a degree or some sort of certification. So associate's degree is completely uh, qualify any kind of master's program, undergraduate degree. Yeah, a lot of certifications also count. Wow. Mm-hmm. So wow. 85. that's how I got my master's. Is Princeton University paid 85% of my tuition. Hey, it's and and this is not the only group. We're going to do this every year now. Yes, right? you'll be back yes. in the spring. We, yes, we will recruit sooner at y'all schools. So we'll go to as many campuses as I can cram in. Okay, um, we'll go to other technical schools as well. We'll you know we'll be we'll be promoting this program. Um, there's. I mean, I'll also be promoting my internships and stuff too. Oh, so what, yes. wait, wait, well, let's, wait, let's talk yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, wait, 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 so no, so we have the apprenticeship program for the graduates that want to be a technician right. that works here at PPPL, but there's also an internship program? We've got all kinds of stuff. Um, so I'm in the science education department. We have a lot of programs that are within our department. Um, the apprenticeship is for those who have a high school or equivalent. Um, for okay. those who have an undergraduate degree, we have an engineering undergraduate internship, um, which is for the, during the summer and they get paid. We also have a high school internship, which is for high school seniors. Oh man! Um, it's during their school uh, uh, during the school year. It's during their senior year. So we have a, a fall semester and a spring semester internship, and they can also uh, participate in the summer after they graduate. Wow! So we don't accept juniors. So hold off. <laughs> okay, but <laughs> but we do accept seniors for but that. A program. rising senior, a, a kid who just so a rising their 11th grade year. So is it is it the application at the end of the junior year? Because if I'm a parent listening to this and I'm like, my son or daughter is a STEM person, yes. a, a, an en- a potential engineer. They love energy research. This is something really neat. And, yes. Or I'm a student, more importantly, it's yes. like, how do I get into this? Right. So the for if you're a, a junior currently, you can apply for the spring intern, uh, I mean, sorry, the fall yes. internship for the following year to participate during your uh, senior, senior year. year. And then in the fall of your senior year, you can apply for the spring after that. Got it. And then also we'll open up the uh, the application for the, the summer Program. So it's, it's, it's possible. I'm listening and understanding and parroting mm-hmm. back to you. Wow, I'm super passionate. I apply. I get brought into the fall. Mm-hmm. I really love it. Th- they like me. I like them. I turn around. I come back in the spring. And mm-hmm. then I could come back in the summer, provided that yes. there's an upwelling yes. of uh, the individual's capabilities yes. and how it integrates and meshes with the department. Right. So that's the other thing to note, though, is this. And this is also the same uh, policy that we have for our science undergraduate laboratory internship and our community college internship. We have other internships for those who are not interested in the engineering necessarily, but the science uh, research or, um, what the policy is is that we don't create projects just for students. It's all things that are contributing to the mission of the lab. They're working on real research projects and real engineering pro- oh projects, building real machines here that we need to do our work. And they're contributing to the mission of the lab. That's awesome. That is amazing. Um, Shannon, how how can they, is there a, on the website, is oh, there a yeah. way to read more about this? And also... How do we? How do the kids get in touch with you if they want to ask you questions? Yes. So my email address is sgreco at ppl dot gov. Greco with two C's. G-R-E-C-O. One C. G R. Yeah. S as in Sam. G R E C O at ppp three p's l dot g o v gov. Not edu. Not com. Um, that gets like, a little tricky sure sometimes. That gets, that gets um, kind of wonky. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, and our website is ppl dot gov. Okay. Um, www dot ppl dot gov and you can find all of our programs there so we've got the the 
yeah, undergraduate internships. We've got three total internships for undergrads. That's the engineering undergrad, the science undergrad, uh, undergrad and the community uh, college in, uh, internships. Excellent. So, Producer Nick will also put that up on yeah. the uh, on our on our on the description yeah. on, the, on the page. By so the we have the high school internships too. Um, and then we also have one day programs like our young women's conference, which Ooh, yeah. that's exciting. Yeah. Very exciting. <laughs> it is. It's so awesome. It's such an exciting experience. Mm -hmm. So Dee Dee Ortiz is our program manager for that. That's her baby. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the young women's conference. It's um, grades seven through 10. Um, so I think y'all have students in that oh, age, we, right? So. I, I've, I've already created an account for MCTS <laughs> and I'm waiting for the application to open, which I think is October 18th. It is indeed. Jump oh, on it a no, second I'm that it that. opens. I got uh, my alarm yeah. set on my outlook. Okay. I, know, I know a couple of kiddos who are, uh, who are perfect for that. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, we're going to, I think this is a good time to wrap it up on sure. that note. Um, this has been fantastic, Shannon. Thank you so much for, uh, of course, my pleasure for, for all of this and for having us here in this beautiful place. I can't it's, wait to see your students in the fall or in the spring. <laughs> it's going to be great. We're going to be at the, I mean, I know we're definitely going to be at the Young Women's Conference. I mm -hmm. know we're, we're going to have STEM guys and girls applying for these internships for next year because our STEM Academy is thriving. It's yeah, doing yeah, so it's well. Very, and very well. to have this is such a, it, it, it's just amazing to have this in our backyard with the history and the legacy of the facility and now to have a partnership and an yeah. and apprenticeship and opportunities. Thank you so much. Come join us. <laughs> we will. We'll also, one other thing, we, we'd uh, probably going to arrange to have some kids coming up uh, just to tour the place. Oh, right? yeah. We, we have public tours too. all the time. So first Good. and third Fridays of every month, um, public tours. You just got to sign up online. That link is also on that pppl.gov. Um, and uh, anybody so can a, do that. So a student and a parent could come here. Oh, easily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Phenomenal. I'm the best tour guide. Oh, okay. so you can request her when you, uh, when you <laughs> well, sign up. The but door. I will do separate uh, outside of the first and third uh, Fridays. Mm -hmm. I, I'll, I'll also do special tours for school oh, we're groups definitely and gonna get Girl on Scouts that. Yeah. and all that. Excellent. Awesome. Thank Very you cool. so much, Shannon. Of course. Shannon Greco, Shannon Swilly Greco, your <laughs> humble tour guide. Um, <laughs> we, we appreciate you taking some time and uh, uh, keeping an eye on our kiddos. Yeah. Uh, we look forward to, to working with you more in the future. Uh, on behalf of myself and Shannon Swilly Greco and producer Nick MacGyver Sikowski and the great Dave Nash. This is us reminding you to discover your passion and unlock your future. <laughs>